In this second episode of Street Food Journeys Malaysia plant-based edition, we're headed to historic and cultural Malacca. Now, Malacca is known as one of the top food destinations in Malaysia, and it's famous for dishes such as chicken rice balls. I'm going to show you how to make a vegan version of that. And also for otak otak or grilled spicy fish cakes. And again, I'll show you how to make a vegan version of that as well. Now, our master Malaysian cuisine chef, Bob Adnan, who is from Malacca originally, will show us how to make bubur sum sum, but with a durian twist. And the jet lag warriors join us to uh, sample some Malacca sweets and snacks. And make sure you stay tuned to the end to find out what their first impressions were of Malacca. So Hainanese chicken rice, another one of the uh, dishes that I used to sell at my restaurant. Uh, but we're going to make a vegan version today and we're going to keep it simple. I know there are lots of different ways to make vegan chicken or create vegan chicken substitutes. Uh, we're going to just use mushrooms for the chicken, okay? And these mushrooms, they're called uh, king oyster mushrooms. This is what it looks like, okay? And you only need to use the stems. You can buy mini king oyster mushrooms as well. So I've used a combination of the mini ones and also the full-size ones. Uh, as far as cooking Hainanese chicken rice, uh, you want to prepare the rice and you want to prepare the chicken or chicken substitute and you want to make the sauce and you also want to make the dip for it which is a chili sauce okay so there are quite a few different things that you got to do um so let's get started you want some ginger okay i'll just cut up some bits of ginger here lots of garlic i've got some garlic that i already minced and i want a little bit of onion and we're just going to cut out a chunk of onion here you want the onion the ginger and just want to blitz this I'll show you what I've done with the mushrooms you're only using the mushroom stems so I've just broken them up then we're gonna braise them in a little bit uh, we're gonna use the spring onion as garnish later on that's the onion and ginger so I'm gonna throw in most of the garlic in here and the onion and ginger mix add some oil just saute it you know i want to take a little bit of the mixture back out because i want to use some of it to poach the the mushrooms with it so you want to fry this till it's aromatic you're going to add some rice into it and add some seasoning and i'm going to cook the rice per normal as though you were just cooking boiled rice or steamed rice now usually they will suggest that you rinse the rice but we're going to shortcut this fry it a little bit more this is garlic rice and it's meant to be garlic key okay so you want to cook it till it's aromatic and toasty let's add in the rice mix it through add water and as far as the seasoning, I'm going to put a bit of uh, mushroom powder in here. You can add a bit of salt uh, as well if you like. So this is mushroom seasoning. If you want to turn this into rice balls, just add a bit more water to make the rice softer so that they will stick together. Okay, when you form them into balls, they don't crumble apart. Okay, I'm just going to add a pinch of salt to it. A little bit of pepper if you want. Okay, so I'm going to transfer this to the rice cooker and let it finish cooking. We're going to fry up the rest of the mixture. Just saute it till it's flavoursome. I'm going to throw in the mushrooms. Add a bit of chick, uh, mushroom seasoning. And I'm going to add some water. And let's just cook it for about five minutes or so. Okay, let's have a look. So this is what we've ended up with. So what we're going to do now 
is to make the sauce, okay? So the sauce usually is a combination of a uh, soya sauce, oyster sauce, dark soy, a bit of sugar, and some stock. We're not using oyster sauce. I know you can get vegetarian oyster sauce, but I'm trying to keep it so that you don't have to buy specialty vegetarian, uh, vegetarian or vegan ingredients for this. Okay, so we're going to eliminate the oyster sauce. We're going to use just soya sauce, dark soy, otherwise known as cooking caramel nowadays, the mushroom seasoning. Bit of sugar, and a bit of water. So let's just cook this up and adjust the seasoning. I'm going to use a little bit of the stock from the mushrooms. I'm going to add a little bit more water because the soya sauce is a little bit strong. Yeah, it doesn't taste too bad at all. I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to thicken it ever so slightly with a bit of tapioca starch, okay? And sesame oil. So that's the sauce. Now we're going to make the chili sauce, okay? The chili sauce is actually a ginger chili sauce. And I'm going to get another nugget of ginger here. Throw it in. And throw in some fresh chilies. They have to be fresh chilies not dry for this particular recipe. So fresh whole chili, just remove the stem. Okay, so we're gonna add some water to this and add some salt and just blitz it. Okay, that's what it looks like. Pretty spicy. If you want, you can add a dash of lime or lemon juice in here. Just add a dash. You want some cucumber? Chicken rice, cucumber. What I do is I cut it in half like this and then cut it in thin slices. And then to serve it up, arrange this, get the mushrooms. And see how it's coming along. The sauce. Some of the chili dip. Copious amounts of sesame oil, crispy homemade fried onion. There you go, just waiting on the rice. And let's taste test the broth that the mushrooms were simmering in. Okay, so this is the, 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 the water that I used to simmer the mushrooms in. It's very flavorsome. I just need to add a touch of salt to it. I want to serve it up as the soup to go with this, okay? dash of pepper, spring onion, and if you have coriander, just throw in some coriander. Okay, so the rice is ready, that's how it looks. Okay, so you can serve it as is with the meal, or you can uh, scoop them into and, and, and mold them into little tennis balls, uh, no, into a ping pong ball size bowls, okay? In my hometown in Nogri Sambilan in Seremban, they make them in larger bowls. In Malacca, they make them into small little bowls. So there you go. It's the vegan Hainanese chicken rice. Hit me up if you've got any questions and don't forget to sign up. If you want the recipe to this and all our vegan recipes from this series, okay? You're gonna get a recipe book in your inbox when the series is over. Okay, I'll see you next time. What do you think is it peanuts? Sugar and is it peanuts? Yeah, peanuts. Okay. Watchy. Watchy. Oh yeah. Peanut butter and sugar. Peanut butter and sugar. Mm. Like cake is like a and very chewy. Yeah. It's kind of like chewy and soft. Well, this is good, but this is not gonna fill me up. We on the on the on the on the on the. This is the 
Coconut pump sugar. Pump sugar. Yes, pump sugar. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's liquid in there. Yeah. Liquid. So when you bite into it, it kind of explodes in your mouth. <laughs> wow, it's like a sugar rush. It's really great. Quay Korea. This might be your favorite quay, Ajib. Yeah. Really? My favorite quay. Wow. wow. But and this is uh, special from Malacca. Yeah, special right? from Malacca. They're using the palm sugar. Palm sugar. Gula Malacca. Gula Malacca. Mm. Of course. Correct. Awesome. What mm. could be better than road tripping mm. with a jeep? Is it good, Ivana? Mm hmm. Look at the inside. Mm. Nice, right? Like sweet potato. Mm. Oh, it smells it's good. Like it's still hot. Inside. It's still hot. It's still hot. Yeah, it's soft inside. Really mm. good. Mm. Ajib, you're the best, buddy. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hot. Mm. It's hot. Hello everyone, we meet again. Ah, I'm Chef Bob from Master of Malaysian Cuisine. Today, ah, we, I want to show it to you. Uh, one recipe, simple recipe, but it's very, very famous in Malacca. We call it uh, Bubo Som Som. But uh, this time, I twist a bit. I put it now a season of a king of fruits, durian. Uh, so what I call it now is Bubo Som Som Durian. First, we need to have santan, or we call it uh, coconut milk, 800 ml. We need the coloring. Uh, durian is a yellow color, so we need to have a yellow color. Then, we need a sagu. This. Then, we need to have rice flour, 50 grams. Uh, this is the best one. I have a durian meat, and this durian meat is special meat. It's a black thorn. You see the color yellow? Very nice, right? Mm, the smell also very good. We need to have some salt, then we need to have some water to boil the sagu later on. Then we need to have a palm sugar. I boil it to become a syrup, add some water in the pot. Then we add the sagu that we already uh, wash it clean and then uh, soak it about 15 minutes. Now we have to boil it to make the sagu very soft and it must be looks like uh, ice or fish. Ah, that's the secret when you uh, boil the sagu. So if you look now, the sagu is very stick now. Ah, uh, to you need to very gentle stir, otherwise the sagu uh, will break it. So we need to have combine them. This. Look at here, the sagu already done. Yeah, just cool it little bit, just for one minute. Later on, we going to add in on the durian and also the coloring. Very easy. So let's do the som som. So now we're going to the second step, how to do a som som. So we need to have a 8 ml of coconut milk. Just a little bit of a water, so right. Okay, we need to add this rice flour, 50 gram. You need to stir it and make sure it's not a curdle inside or lumpy. Yeah? Very slow uh, heat, but you need to stir it all the time. Little bit of salt. Look at that, it's become uh, really blend together. It's, let me show it to you, see? It's become like a foam. Ah, it's like a bone marrow meat. Yeah. Okay, let's whisk again. Very uh, slow heat. Let it is uh, coconut cook very well with the flour. And later on, we need to strain it to sieve it. So, now it's a uh, uh, favorite process because of I have a durian here to mix with this sago. So what we have to do now, we just mix it the durian uh, paste. Ah, put inside the sago. Mmm, the smell of durian now is all around my house. <laughs> so we mix it with the sago. So Bob like to have to put coloring. So let it have a little bit more yellow color and more to uh, like a durian color. A little bit of the yellow color so looks like the royal color the yellow we need to add our bowl for setup slowly all right mm. don't put so much because later on on top you will add on the 
som som uh, starting on top there we go if you want to use a piping bag so som som must be on top this one you can have it warm or you can have it cool but i like uh, cool because it's very freshness so now ah after pulling the fridge about uh, one hour or two hour, uh, two hours so we bring it out the uh, som som durian so now the final touch we add the palm sugar on top look at that like a lick here mm. if you want to put add more should be no worry so like this so it's ready now bubo som som durian bon appetit let's try it let's try it bubo som som durian now mm. look at the mixer you need to mix it with this uh, sugar uh, syrup and the sago very nice bubo som som durian I used to sell Ota Ota for fish cakes for my business and depending on which part of Malaysia you're from, it can either be steamed or grilled. The version I sold was grilled and uh, the version I sold was also non-vegan but we're going to make a vegan version of it today and this is what I would do if I were to change it to a vegan version I would be happy to put on my menu. Now, uh, with Ota Ota, the ingredient is fish, fish that's been blended into a paste so what I've got here is some tofu, white tofu, but also some tofu puffs, okay? We're going to combine the two to replicate not just the, uh, the fish meat, but also its texture as well, right? So white tofu, which we're going to mash to represent the white fish fillets. But if you've ever eaten ota ota, any, anything that requires fish, paste as its base usually has a certain spring springiness in its texture okay and we're going to try and replicate the springiness by using fried tofu puffs which you can also find in asian grocery stores in the refrigerator section usually or freezer section so we'll chop these up the non-vegan ingredients that we're going to be replacing with vegan stuff are the fish paste obviously the um malacha or shrimp paste and also uh, eggs okay so those are the key ingredients. So this is what this looks like chopped up. It's, uh, it's still springy, bouncy, and it's tofu, okay? And this here, we're going to mash. So you wanna totally mash this. Okay, scrape this in, mix it up. I got a hold of some wakame, which is a Japanese seaweed that you usually get with sushi. You know, the ones that look like grass, the green version. Uh, it also comes in dried version. So I bought a pack of the dried version and I blitzed it into a powder form. Okay, so it just gives it that little bit of a seafoody vibe to your tofu. So I've got some ground bean paste. I'm going to add this in. This is a little bit salty. What does go into my ota ota? is Malaysian fish curry powder. So we're just gonna add that in. You can't get a hold of fish curry powder, just regular curry powder is fine. Kaffir lime leaves. Now usually I would use fresh kaffir lime leaves and cut it into thin strips or blitz it in a food processor or blender till it's fine, okay? Throw that in. There's mushroom seasoning, coconut cream, I would usually put a bit of tapioca starch in the fish paste, okay so we will retain that. And I would also in the fish paste add some fried onion or fried shallots, these you can buy commercially. Just adds texture because it's a little bit crunchy and also flavor and also some bulk to your to your ota ota. Okay, so this is how it looks at the moment. 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a bit of bee sand or chickpea flour. Let's just put a bit of that in here. And you know what? I'm going to add a touch of turmeric powder to this just to make it a little bit more, um, more yellow in hue. Okay, so let's do this by hand. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It doesn't look too different to the non-vegan version, at least visually. Okay, so what we're going to do now is wrap them in parcels using banana leaves. These are frozen banana leaves, so it's a bit hard to tell, but usually if you were using fresh banana leaves, it would be quite obvious that one side is dark and glossy and the other side is paler and a little bit dusty looking. You've got like a, a spine here that's quite tough and thick. So let's just cut that off. Okay, so what you want to do is uh, you want to just cut them into about three inch wide lengths. This is a, at the tail end of it, so we might not end up using this, but basically you want them like this, okay? And I, like I said, I like to make them a little bit smaller because I like to have the filling just kind of peek out in the middle for aesthetic reasons. So you've got these pieces here and what you want to do, you just want to place a dollop of this. It's about a tablespoon and a half or so. And then you just fold up either side. Like I said, I like to leave it slightly open here in the middle. So you can just kind of peek through and then you would secure the edges. So I can just right where the filling and the leaf meets. Okay, so rather than over here, you want to secure them over here uh, using bamboo toothpicks or if you want to cheat, you're just going to use staples. Okay. Okay, so this is how it's going to look. Okay, so I've just got a little camping stove. I'm just going to start heating this up. We're going to brush this with a little bit of oil this on. It shouldn't take too long to cook. Now in Malaysia usually this would be cooked on a charcoal grill. If you like you can just cover it just to help it cook a little bit faster. So you want to cook it until when you press it down, it springs back up, okay? It doesn't just sink in because if it just sinks in, it means it's not done yet. Now, if you don't have banana leaves, you can actually just fry up these, uh, the fish paste or the vegan fish paste in, in oil, just as though they were fish cakes, okay? So I've done that before, but I just spoon dollops of it in oil and fry it up that way. But the banana leaves really definitely help to give it a nice, uh, nice flavor. Check them out, check them out. You wanna remove the banana leaves, just be careful with the staples if you're using staples, and munch away, okay? Actually, Ivana had a great word. I've been calling this place very photogenic. Ivana says it's charming. Charming. It's a better word. Yeah. I mean, KL is photogenic because it's brand new and modern and it's still beautiful, but charming is kind of more rustic and antique and Malacca. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the name of the vlog, title of the YouTube vlog, Most Charming City in Malaysia. Ooh.